Hi everyone, in this video we will discuss what is submodeling, how is it performed in ANSYS Mechanical and how can it be used in structural and thermal analysis in a computationally efficient way of getting accurate results. Let's go. In finite element analysis, the geometry of the part is divided into multiple small elements called as mesh. While the accuracy of all solutions depends on the density of the mesh, elemental solutions such as stresses and stains have stronger dependence compared to nodal solutions such as displacement and force reactions. Therefore, if one's objective is to calculate the displacement and reaction forces, then one may get away with a relatively coarser mesh. But if the objective is to calculate the stresses and stains, then a final mesh is recommended. A final mesh increases the computational cost and this can become a bottleneck in case of larger assemblies. Localized mesh controls can help in achieving some efficiency but in case of larger assemblies even a coarser mesh may already exhibit high computational cost. To this end, analysts use a technique known as submodeling which is also known as cut boundary displacement method or the specified boundary displacement method. In this method, first the analysis is carried out on full assembly using a relatively coarse mesh so the reaction forces and displacements are captured accurately. Then the region of interest is identified and it is separated from the rest of the assembly and a separate analysis is performed on this region using a final mesh to calculate elemental solutions such as stresses and strains. The displacement at the cut boundaries are imported from the prior analysis and mapped to this new part that uses final mesh. These displacements along with other loads acting in the region now act as new loads and boundary conditions and the analysis is now performed using a final mesh. This way the stresses and strains in the region of interest are calculated accurately without having to solve for the full assembly meshed with final density. What is also attractive about this method is that you don't need to identify region of interest beforehand. You can define multiple sub-models to investigate different portions of your assembly. This method is based on St. Venet's principle which states that stresses and strains developed in a body at points away from the applied loads depend only on the static resultant of such load and not on their distribution. So if the cut boundaries are far enough from detailed region of interest, one can map their displacements to analyze just the region of interest. There are several advantages to this approach. It reduces the need for complicated mesh transitions in the FE models, enables to try different designs for the region of interest such as different fillet radii, reduce the computational cost by solving for smaller regions with finer mesh. One can also use abstract models such as beams and shells in prior analysis and replace them with more detailed solid models in the submodel. One does not need to know a priori the location of high stress regions and multiple submodels can be created for different areas. But one must exercise caution in picking the location for cut boundaries as the accuracy of solution depends on it. It's also worth noting that submodeling approach is not limited to structural analysis. In ANSYS Mechanical, one can use the same method for thermal analysis as well where the nodal temperatures are mapped between the models at cut boundaries. With that said, let us see how to perform submodeling for the structural analysis in ANSYS Mechanical. In this demo, we will perform a stress analysis of bike frame under the weight of the rider. The weight of the rider acts through three segments of the bike, the seat, the paddle and the handlebar. Depending on the position of the rider, the percentage of weight acting through each point varies and this results in numerous load cases. In this demo, we will explore one such case where about 20% of the load acts through the handlebar and the rest 80% is equally distributed between the seat and the paddles. But the choice of the load case does not change the procedure for the subject of this video, which is submodeling. In the best interest of time, we already have the model set up, but I will walk you through the loads and boundary conditions so you are up to the speed on the discussion. This model has several parts in the form of bike frame, seat support and the handle. We have assigned a structural steel material 
to all the parts and they are all connected to each other using bonded contacts. The bike frame is hinged about the front and the back wheels but it is free to deform between these two points. So in order to avoid over constraining the model, we will fix the translation in Z direction and keep the rotation about Y axis free on both the ends. The bike frame can deform in X direction so we will keep the front wheel free in X direction and fix it in the rear wheel. We do this because this is a static analysis and we need to constrain the model to ensure that there are no rigid body motions. We use similar strategy and constrain the translation in Y direction and rotations about X and Z directions in the rear tire but keep them free in the front tire. We will use remote displacements to define these conditions. We have created two name selections for the front and the back wheels beforehand. Before we create remote displacement objects, let's create two local coordinate system for the front and the rear wheels that can be used in defining the constraints. Right click on the coordinate systems and insert a new coordinate system. Change the defined by to name selection and select front wheels from the drop down menu. Name this coordinate system as front wheels so it's easily identifiable. Follow the same procedure to define a new coordinate system scope to the name selection rear wheels and rename the coordinate system as rear wheels. Now go ahead and define two remote displacement objects and change their scoping to named selection. Scope the first object to the name selection front wheels, change the coordinate system to front wheels and set the coordinates of the remote point to the origin. Now set the Z component to 0 and change the behavior to rigid. Next scope the second remote point to rear wheels, change its coordinate system to rear wheels and set the coordinates of the remote point to origin. Set everything except rotation about Y to 0. Make sure that the behavior is set to rigid. Next, let's define the loads. Let's assume that the rider weighs 100 kg. So we apply 20% of the weight on the handlebar, 40% on the paddles and another 40% on the seat. This completes the model setup. So let's go ahead and solve this model. Once we have the results, let's look at the stresses in the bike frame. To do this, plot the equivalent stress in the full assembly. From this plot, we can identify a few regions in the frame where stress builds up due to the load. In this analysis, our region of interest is the paddle region. So let's zoom into this location. Let's make top and bottom limits of the legend independent so we can impose the upper and lower limits. Now we can clearly see that the stresses are building up around the sharp, sharp corners which make them critical regions in the design. We can use probes to get the actual value of stresses in these regions. Similarly, we can also plot the total deformation to get nodal displacements in these regions. Now that we have identified the critical region, let's perform a design iteration by introducing fillets in this region and use a final mesh to see how the stress distribution changes in the part. We will use sub-modeling technique to do this instead of making the design iteration on full assembly. The first step to, is to identify where to define the cut boundaries. We can see over here that there are no strong stress gradients in this region which makes it a good choice to place the boundaries. So let's go ahead and slice the geometry at these regions and introduce fillets of 2mm radius at sharp corners. Since geometry modifications are out of the scope of this video, we have the geometry prepared 
for this demo and saved as a separate file. Create a new system in Workbench and attach this file. Before we open Mechanical, let's create a connection between the solution of prior analysis to setup of the new analysis. It's a good practice to name the systems for easier identification, so rename the prior analysis as course model and the new analysis as sub model. Next open Mechanical and assign the material properties to this part. Define a body sizing mesh control to mesh this part using final mesh and put the element size to 2.5 mm. Next we need to define the loads and boundary conditions. First create a force object and scope it to the paddle, same as the force that was applied in course model and define a load of minus 392.4 Newton which is 40% of the rider's weight. The other force objects are not needed as we do not have those geometries included here, but their effects will be accounted for by importing displacements at the cut boundaries. Before we do that, let's identify the cut boundaries and create a name selection. Select four faces in the model and create a name selection cut boundaries. Now right click on the sub modeling object in the model tree and insert cut boundary constraint object. Note that the sub modeling object is introduced into the model tree since we created a connection earlier in the workbench project window between the two systems. Scope it to cut boundary constraint that we created earlier. After that, right click on the imported cut boundary object and select import load. This will map the displacements from the earlier model onto the new mesh. You can see the map displacements on the cut boundaries. One can also turn on the display for the source points to see where the displacement field is available. That completes defining the loads and boundary condition. So let's go ahead and solve the model. Now let's plot the total deformation on this part and compare it to the solution from course model. We can see that the difference between the two models is very little which implies that our course model has a mesh density that was acceptable for calculating force reactions and displacements. Now let's plot the stress distribution and compare the two analysis. Let's make the top and bottom limits of legend independent and define the limits consistent to what we had in the COSA model. We can see that stress patterns are similar between the two analysis but the actual values are different. This is because the stress calculations are more reliable at finer mesh density. Also remember that we introduced fillets in this iteration so that further smoothens the stress distribution. Now let's spend some time in understanding the advantage of this approach. We did not know a priori the critical regions in the model. We ran the full assembly using a relatively coarser mesh and identify a few regions where the stress concentrations are higher. Based on this, we picked our region of interest and ran another analysis using sub-modeling technique. This way, we can identify the regions that need finer mesh or more details such as fillets and perform a detailed analysis on those regions. As a result, we can avoid using a very dense mesh or finer details in the full assembly which can significantly ramp up the analysis time in more complex models. Also, one may ask, since the structure is thin and tubular, it may be modeled using shell elements or even beams with circular cross section. In such cases, the coarser model can be modeled using shell or beams and the region of interest can be replaced with solid elements in the submodel. In this video, we decided to go with solid elements in both the course and submodels for illustrative purposes. So, in conclusion, submodeling is method used in finite elements to perform accurate analysis in region of interest with better efficiency. 
This method is based on St. Manon's principle and it can be used for both structural and thermal analysis in ANSYS mechanical. Care must be taken in placing the cut boundaries away from regions of sharper gradients. This technique can also be used for learning various design iterations by including smaller details such as fillets of different radii. This concludes the video. I hope that you have learned the concept of submodeling. If you found this video useful, then please share, comment and subscribe to this channel. Also, do visit our website ansys.com courses to discover other useful and free courses.